Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I'm going to honestly say here that I don't know anybody that is more metaphysically connected than she is, really, as a clairvoyant, psychic medium, deep into astrology, which we found out last week, which I didn't know how deep she runs, also with energy work and healing, but she makes it so clear, and that's the best part about it, and she's back with us, Nicole Smith, on the program. Hey, Nicole, how you doing? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. We're going to talk about chakras today and, you know, we'll start from the beginning and explain what they are, but how we can harness the power of the chakras in our body to feel better mentally, physically. Um, and I'm aware of them, but I never knew that we can do it by ourselves to yeah. maybe clear the energy um, or just kind of move things forward. I always thought you had to, had to, had to go to a yeah, an energy healer or some kind of practitioner, but maybe not so much, right? Um, you you, you should. I'll, I I kind yeah. of recommend a three month kind of thing. I think it's a good time frame. Kind of think about it in quarters of the year is how I view it. Anyhow, personally, that you know quarterly go get them completely aligned, clean, cleansed, reiki, whatever you want to do, what works for you. Um, but you can in the in the meantime through understanding, studying, meditating. There's so many various areas that you can dive into to start to clear the chakras out um, your, yourself and just becoming aware of how that energy moves throughout the body, what they mean, so that you understand the emotional, the spiritual, and the physical symptoms that come along with your chakras being out of alignment with one another. Why don't we explain just briefly what a chakra mm -hmm. is? We have seven in our body. I've often heard, too, that there's many more than that, but seven major ones, right? So there's seven main chakra centers in the body. There are ones below our feet. There are ones above our heads. We use the palm chakras. I use palm chakra work uh, in the Reiki and energy healing that I do connecting with other people. And then we actually have 114 energy prana centers throughout our entire body. And of course, they're always, you know, as we go through these things, as the years evolve, we also come to find that there's more stuff going on metaphysically with us that we, you know, we can't see, but the interesting thing is the chakra centers and the, and the energy centers are all connected to the endocrine system in the body. So we're able to tell through that basic lymphatic exchange throughout the body, what's going on with us. Um, a good example I'll say is you know, just past this past Friday, I had a chakra class that I taught in, in my store and, you know, a lot of people, beginners, they're familiar with the word, but not what it does, how it works. But, you know, you think about like our auric field around our body, it's an electromagnetic, electromagnetic field around us. Um, so the inner, this, the uh, chakra centers sit inside of the body. So you're looking at the root, which sits at the base of the spine. You're looking at the sacral, which sits right below the navel. You have the solar plexus, which sits right about the opening of our diaphragm area, the heart space, which is the heart area, the throat chakra, the third eye right above and then our crown chakra, which opens us up to the divine processes to be able to be those conduits and accept guidance. So all seven chakras are, are very interesting because they uniquely define different areas of our life. The one thing I, I tell people to think about is the solar plexus, the sacral and the root. So your bottom three, those are our connections to the external world and how we take in the outside experience. The solar plexus is the first chakra in the body that starts to focus on the self because we're looking at the ego, our willpower, our personal power, um, you know, our confidence. So it really starts to hone in on who we are and then how we also you know, see that from the outside perspective. You know, that's a lot of where the, I wonder what a person will think of me if I do X, Y, and Z comes from. I'll say on this side note, rule number one, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of you. You got to stop that preconceived notion right off the bat. But the heart chakra is the center or the bridge to those external and then the throat, the third eye and the crown being our internal world of how we connect with, how we see things, our perception, our ability to communicate and honesty and truthfulness. And the very unique thing about the throat chakra is if you look at any diagram in regards to the chakras, they all have one opening, but the throat has two. I'm going to ask you, Steve, do you know why that would be? Would you guess why? I didn't even know they had an opening. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta so, take in energy somewhere yeah i guess so i just thought the energy kind of just infused but okay why are there two 
because throat chakra is not just about our ability to communicate outwardly. It's also about our ability to listen, listen, okay. genuinely listen. So I tell people like, think of it like a, tr a trumpet. And I've seen it defined this way before, like each chakra center from the front of the body opens up like the end of a trumpet would. And then our, our root faces downward because we're drawing that energy up, that grounding energy up. And then the crown is open to the top because we're taking in those divine lessons, the divine voice, you know, our intu intuition through that space. But then the throat has the two openings, the third eye, our perception, and then again in the crown, which shows, opens us to the divine message. So mm. very interesting energy. What about taking a look at one chakra and what we can do to maybe personally clear it? And by the way, I totally agree with you uh, that on a regular basis, you should have that work done by yeah. somebody that knows what they're doing. You can even virtually, uh, yes. you'll feel better. You'll feel lighter. That's how I describe it. Um, more clarity, more clarity. Yeah. Cause you, you think, you think about it. Um, I, and this is probably like a, a gross example, but it's still a, a very clear example. We can all relate to you. Think about the drain pipes in your home. Okay. If one, one section of that pipe is, is clogged up, it really affects the flow of what's going through all the other areas right so same thing with our chakra system is if one is clogged up how is energy freely flowing it's supposed to be a free fluid or fluid movement how are we having divine flow if something is off and i can tell you and i, I tell people this all the time when i work with them i can clear you out today and you could go out in traffic and somebody flips you off because they're feeling some kind of way and that can send one of those suckers like you know off into the distance again but it's about recognizing where that's coming from. And that's where you start to work on those processes that help to keep you in a better alignment moving forward as well. Hmm. Um, thank you for saying that. So let, you know, let's look at that for a moment. You just, we have a clean slate. You just yeah. did somebody's chakras. The energy is, you know, it's all good. Now somebody goes and, and driving and then somebody cuts them off and you know, they get angry for a moment too, whatever. Um, now we have one, two, three, whatever chakras mucked up with negative energy. Mm -hmm. Are they still better than when they started? And because we're always going to be confronting all these different situations anyway. Um, and does the energy, even though, you know, you have that, that, that temporary blip of negative energy, mm -hmm. is it easier to clear out, you know, with, with the work that was previously done by somebody I, like I would you? I would say so because it, it, it kind of it resets. I'm going to call it like a resetting of the energy. Um, I, I tell people, you know, the, when I talk about the holistic, you know, the metaphysical business, the holistic business, the holistic is the holistic approach. So when we're working on the chakras, particularly even though um, I use a pendulum when I do them, I use my hand chakras, I intuitively pick up on things as well. It is to understand the energy surrounding that particular chakra. You know, so it's like when you talk about like going out into, um, you know, traffic and that type of thing, the first two that I think of is the solar plexus, because that's our ego, right? We're getting mad, mm. we're getting defensive, but then it's also about our root chakra because it's like, what, what is our security? What is our, our comfort? So if you think about it in the sense of maybe someone who's been in an accident before goes out, they have someone cut them off that was darn near another accident that creates fear. And that fear starts with that, with that root chakra because it makes us feel unsafe, you know? And at that point, so it's like, we feel, you know, anxiety creeping in, or we get that fight and flight response that kicks in and that adrenaline rush, that adrenaline also comes from the solar plexus chakra. So now we're just mad from the solar plexus of how dare you do that to me? So that is, that starts to step into a bit of the ego space and feeling a little bit bolder maybe than we should as well. So those, again, that's the external environment in those bottom three could be pulled off, you know, center, obviously, because we're in that moment. Sure. But then it's recognizing that we don't have any control. And that solar plexus is very much about control as well. Um, we don't have control over certain situations, even if we do see it as something that's harmful to us. I've never asked this question before, but I always wondered when you work with somebody on clearing their energy. Mm -hmm. And again, you can do it virtually anywhere in the world. How do you know you've cleared the energy out for somebody? How do you know you're done? So, so that's an interesting. So I let spirit guide me. And I also can feel the energetic difference to the person. So some things that I use would be a pendulum to be an indicator as to what's off. 
for, for myself and then everybody else that comes in your, your pendulum, interestingly enough, will attune to you. So I tell people like for me, when my pendulum swings back and forth, that's a yes side to side is a no for me, particularly I'll get them where they stand still and don't move, which tells me there's a lot of like, there's a blockage, there's stuck negative energy within that. Other times they'll slowly spin clockwise or counterclockwise. That too gives me an indication. Do we need to tone it down or, you know, tune it up a little bit per se? So I use a lot of different ways with the pendulum that way. I also use my hands. Do I feel energy flowing? And then I also let spirit guide me, even like doing Reiki when I'm with a person, um, you know, I let my hands be my God. I let spirit tell me to proceed or not to proceed. Uh, I feel, you know, you think about it, like if you're out at a concert and all of a sudden you feel the need to start swaying, you know, just to the tune of the music or the beat of whatever. Um, it's kind of like that for me where I, I had one last week where the throat and the heart were, it was like trying to pull that emotional energy up through the throat so that they could speak about how they actually feel to be able to express the feelings that were being suppressed in the heart center. So I let my hands just kind of do what they feel, what they need to do to work to clear that energy. So I, I can tell a, a massive energetic difference. And then I always ground people, you know, root them down again. And I push that energy up from, from, from the ground, from that, that core center of the earth, up through all the chakras connecting to the divine. If I feel, I can also go back and go, oh, there's a blockage. But I will say too, another experience for me on my end of it is I could go through someone's chakras when they first, uh, you know, lay down on the table or we're doing distance and I can pick up, you know, maybe the third eye is off and the heart is off and the solar plexus is off, but everything else is good. But then once I correct, I guess you could call it those ones that seem to be off, that can throw some other things out of alignment and another way to see it is to think about like, if you ever, if you've ever gone to the chiropractor, you know, we've got to readjust and they'll tell you, you know, you need to come back in a week because it's been too long. We need to keep pushing that back into, to, to its place. So it knows that that's where it's supposed to be. So it's that gentle manipulation of what the body needs in a holistic approach. If you had to pick one modality, Reiki or chakra clearing and balancing, you got to pick one now that's going to be, you know, the, the best cho choice, most impactful. Which would you go for? Reiki. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. And, and I say that because with Reiki, I everything that I do specifically to the chakra balancing um, and stuff like that, I can do within Reiki itself as well. It may take longer, but I'm able to do the same thing. That's, it's just how I personally work through it. Would it have the same detail clearing chakras through Reiki or super focusing during a chakra session? I, I think it depends on the person, to be honest, because um, it depends to our, you know, our chakra centers are also a place where our trauma lives, our experiences live, our pain lives, uh, anything we've been conditioned to believe lives so it's going to depend on where a individual is at, at that point, because, you know, it's, it's creating new habits. It's unlearning everything that we've learned. It also changes those experiences or changing the chemical composition in the brain. If, if you're familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza, reading his stuff, listening to him, it becomes cellular changes in the brain's chemical. So we are also unlearning all of the years of the things that have brought us to this point where we're having a hard time and then incorporating new behaviors that are going to reprogram the brain to work on a more positive vibration. Hmm. How about we pick a chakra Okay. and how we can personally clear it out a little bit, never going to be, you know, to the extent of somebody like you, but you know, if we pick one, how can we make things better for that? particular energy center. Steve, I'm thinking about you as we're sitting here. And it's just funny, I think, because I mentioned the heart and throat and I'm picking up on your heart space. So I'm going to use you, you, use you as the example. <laughs> I Lucky am the guinea you. pig. You're All the right. guinea pig today. Heart space. Um, to me, that, you know, using you as the example, but also just sure. in general, it's it's a clearing out. So, you know, I've talked before, I think in, in, in on our chit chats here about we are universal love 
that's where we start from. That's what we're, we're put here to do. We all have divine purpose, but through that is to emanate love to the world around us and especially to ourselves. So when we look at the heart space, I mean, you know, love is always that one thing as humans we can connect with or the lack thereof is to understand that in it's, it's forgiveness first and foremost, because we all have these experiences that affect all of the chakras in the body. And again, the heart is the bridge to both the internal and the external world. So it's understanding everything that we do from a compassionate space, a loving space, a forgiving space. If we're carrying around um, resentments and we've not forgiven people, or we're still feeling hurt and unhealed from specific issues or experiences in our world, it's really hard to keep that flow moving because it is dead smack in the center of everything within us. Um, we have to operate from, from that space. So when you look at the heart space, and I'm gonna say this as well, when we look at the, the chakra centers and we talk about disease, our, our experiences, our, our structure of the body, everything culminates into a fact that physical disease comes from stagnant energy within the body. You think about cancer cells, they're, mm -hmm. they're stagnant energy, they're diseased energy that sits within the body and then it spreads. It's like a bat, a bat one bad apple in a bushel, it, it's going to spread, right? So I've actually had clients in the past that have had issues with the heart space where they've they're angry they haven't forgiven they're just emotionally shut down end up having heart ailments or something that pertains to the lungs and things like that so you'll see too that these things tend to manifest into wow. the physical world from the inside to the outside yeah so it, 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 even what you're saying there nicole looks like you know let's say somebody had a relationship issue something ended and they often say, you know, oh, yeah, died of a broken heart. And I was going to say, you know, you think about it. I used to keep parakeets. OK, I loved parakeets, still do. Um, but the cat would eat them if we had them now. But, you know, so save, save, save the, the horror. But parakeets will die from a broken heart. Humans are no different, you know, and it, it is, you figure you spend your entire life with, you know, somebody 60, 70 years, you know, God bless these people that stay married all this time. Um, they, they lose what they've, they've considered to be a part of their self. And that is, that is really truly a thing. We, we break down in sorrow that sorrow creates stress on the body, on the mind, on the heart, on our physical ability to function. And it deteriorates the body. It becomes a toxin and a poison to the rest of everything. So the heart space, I think, not that every chakra is so very important, but you know, you think about the external world. When you go out and you have these experiences, you go out and you see somebody and they're they're just mean and nasty. Uh, you know, maybe they're having a bad day. Who knows? We don't know what they're experiencing. But we can either take that experience and make us feel fearful or insecure, or like they're not meeting our desires of how we thought this experience would be. But we need to come at them with compassion. You know, I tell people too, like when they're starting to get into the crystals and things, uh, you know, they've come in, they don't have any, they're not familiar with what they do. I say, carry rose quartz. Rose quartz is for the heart, heart chakra. And I tell them to carry either black obsidian or black tourmaline because it wards off negative energy. You want to be able to create a safe space for your heart, but at the same time, repelling that negative energy. You're not willing to take that energy on, but then giving love and compassion back to a person's situation and then respecting yourself with love from those boundaries you created, which is what Rose Quartz does. It's, it's about love and compassion, friendship, all those great things. But you also need to have those stern boundaries where I can go out here, have this experience. Most importantly, one of the four agreements, do not take it personally and then move forward with your day and not allow that to be something that you take on internally for yourself. Um, I don't think we have time to talk about uh, stones because I'd love to. But <laughs> the rose quartz, do you physically have to carry it with you? Where I'm going with that is I have one. Uh, some, <laughs> some rear view mirror. And I could tell you, I could tell you stories about that. Just that one stone. And mm -hmm. how, oh, how it's impacted other people. They've come up uh -huh. to me. It, it I say in your car, we've got hangers in the store. I, I'm out of them right now, but you can hang them in your car, carry it in your pockets. I wear yeah. I wear bracelets every day, always something different depending on what I feel like I need to address. Um, but I, I carry them on me in jewelry, uh, crystals in my pockets. I Some clients, they come in with them stuffed in their bras. <laughs> you never know where right. you're going to find them. 
I keep them in my purse. I keep them all over my house. Uh, they're all over, obviously, my space in the business. And then I've got my own personal space where I've got my bigger pieces displayed as well. But it's always about setting the intention with these. If, you, if you're going to go hang one in your car, hey, why am I keeping this in here? What, am, what is the intention as I carry this with me? What's it going to do for me throughout my day? It's always about the intention behind it. Hmm. Interesting. So even if you had, uh, you know, I'm going to reach over here and, you know, s spray, uh -huh. even though this is legit Palo Santo, um, if, it, if, if, okay, you have the, well, you have, you have the wood. I've got the wood, <laughs> the, sir. The I've real, got the Peruvian the wood. real deal. But <laughs> in talking about the intention, uh, if you were to buy this at, uh, you know, Bath and Body Works and, but no, hold on. You're making a face, but I'm, I'm just I'm go with me <laughs> because, because I did, um, cause I saw it there. I'm like, yeah, let me get that. And then I'm thinking to myself, this is not, this is probably not a real Palo Santo or, you know, if it was sage, this is not really the real deal. However, if you spray it with the intent of something, even though it's not the real deal, are you closer to the, the outcome with the intent? I'm going to be honest. That might be one of the hardest questions I've ever answered. This is what I'll say. Your intention is always internal within you, right? You know where you're, you're being guided to go. Rocks, crystals, gemstones, however you want to word it, the holy wood, sprays, candles, um, my, my tarot cards that I use. Sure. They're all tools at the end of the day. Do we need tools to set a positive intention? No, it needs to be from the heart and the mind. They need gotcha. to be in conjunction. I will say on, on a separate note, being in the metaphysical business, um, I won't use the word because it's a swear word, but I, I am not easy to deal with when it comes to this side of getting in what I get in. Because there, to me, there's a very strong ethical, moral foundation of why we do what we do. And to me, like to read for people to do this work I could do it to make money and clearly I have to make a living, but I do it with the intention that I'm here to help people. Mm -hmm. So you think too about like diamonds would be a really good example. We've always, I think most people have heard of the term blood diamond, like the crap that goes into cartels and all these crazy things of how these things, these things are, are um, you know, brought in mind, whatever. So when it comes to the crystals, it comes to the woods, it comes to the sages, it comes into, to me, it's how is it being sourced also? Do you have money hungry, greedy people just jumping on the bandwagon or the fad? Or do they truly have an understanding of the intent and purpose behind why we do what we do? So I, I'm very, I'm very difficult <laughs> to deal with in that sense, because like I, I remember there was one grocery store, I won't name names, but that I used. And all of a sudden I walk in and they're selling sage and they're selling certain oils. And I'm like, why in the hell are those in here? It, it, it's become part of the fad. You go to these knockoff, you know, like, um, you know, cheap dollar store type deals. Yep. Um, you see these crystals or these keychains or these these incense. And it's just like, are these being ethically sourced? And I also think of it in this sense too. A lot of the stuff that I do comes on imports. You know, we, we know just as a country that in other countries, fair trade is a very serious issue. You know, child labor, all of those kind of things. I don't want to make a living doing good things on this side if where it's coming from isn't being done the appropriate way. 100%. Yeah. So, you know, that that's a tough one. Like I am very like if that's I don't tell people not to go to those places, but I do ask them to be cognizant of the the reason behind it. Like what's the intent and purpose in this? Is this to truly help or is this to jump on the bandwagon? Because like with Motivite, Motivite was a fad on TikTok. I was losing my mind. Everyone's like, yeah, Motivite. I'm like, don't touch it. You don't even know what it does. But they just know that one person said it changed my life forever. It was crazy. And now they want to experience it like it's, you know, something in the moment. Yet, You know, it just. Absolutely. And on the other side, where it comes from, even though your intent, my intent for it is good, mm -hmm. it negates a lot of it. If there was negativity in terms Attached of how it was it. sourced, mind and yep. everything. Um, real quick, back to the rose quartz in terms yes. of the intention. My intention of hanging it on my rearview mirror is love, 
positivity. My mom's name yeah, was Rose. Right. My mom's name that's was Rose. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. So that's, that that is one of the main reasons, you know, and it's just, you know, kind of a remembrance of her, but also just, you know, the positive stuff. Like I'll see it there. Okay. Sometimes I don't even know it's there. Um, mm. but whether that intent it works. That's right. what I'm, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that's a good thing. I know that's a, you have to set that intention. And I think too, those, those physical reminders of those things being in front of us or in our awareness or our presence is a reminder as to why we're stepping into a day. Like I said, with my bracelets, I'm a big bracelet fanatic. Mm -hmm. Um, so even going through my day, maybe sitting in my office or getting ready for things like this or whatever. And I look down and I'm like, you know, there's my tiger's eye. I'm protected. I'm safe. Like, I'm being guided by spirit every moment of the way. And that the sick, the uh, rutilated courts is our desires. Like I'm a, I'm in a safe place to express my desires and, and feel abundant in, in all ways that make me feel good externally and internally. So it, they're, they're nice reminders just to have to kind of help you to shift that mental, mental thought process. All the stuff that we're talking about, yes. Nicole, can we find that on your website? Let's say if we wanted to buy a rose quartz or black tourmaline or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So I've got okay. over a hundred plus tumbles in the store. Again, we're still prettying up the website. My schedule has been insane and we've had some, uh, unfortunately we had a, a, a worker's um, sister pass and we've had a lot of, everybody's kind of going through something right now, it seems like, but um, it, it's a work in progress, but yes, we have the candles, we've got um, huh. the crystals, we've got cards, we've got books, we've got herbs. I got over 140 different herbs, <clears throat> excuse me, fresh ethically sourced herbs that are organic. You can cook with them. Most of them, some of them, they're for external use only. So it depends on what you're you're looking for. But we really do have a little bit of everything. And if I if it's not on there, you reach out to me. If I don't have it, nine times out of ten, I can get it. I don't doubt that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great talk today. And yeah, I've been down the the chakra road before, but not to this depth. And so easy to understand and how important intentions are. I mean, it's right oh, there. Yeah, absolutely. With, with What's your website, Nicole? Holisticallyzenwv.com. And you can check us out on YouTube at Path of Enlightenment Tarot. I will say I just got 10 of the Zodiacs put up for current energies. If you're a Cancer, if you're a Scorpio, water signs are crazy, but everybody, Taurus, um, Virgo. I'm doing Virgo and Libra today, as a matter of fact, oh, Steve. okay. There you um, go. But very powerful energy as we're moving through this eclipse. And then the May readings will be up here over the weekend. So a lot, okay. a lot to catch up on. Final question. We talked uh, last time about the Mercury retrograde. We're currently in one right now. We're a few days in, in just three words, maybe five, your opinion so far of what you experienced with this retrograde. Um, massive change, massive realizations. So far? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of returns, a lot of returns of energy, a lot of returns of people, a lot of returns of the past of things that needed to be closed out. And I think over the next week or so, week and a half, we're, we're going to deeply and heavily see quite a bit more of that. Wow. Okay. Be mindful. <laughs> yeah, hey, pay yeah. attention to everything. Pay attention to your surroundings. Expect the unexpected. If you didn't think it could happen. You might be surprised pleasantly or unpleasantly. Wow. All right. Well, you've, been, you've been, I don't want to say you've been warned, but you've been uh, educated. You've been educated. There you go. Pay attention. Yep. Yeah. Nicole, great talking with you. And uh, you're available. Somebody wants to do uh, psychic medium readings, tower readings, or even just insight on all of us, chakra balancing. Uh, I do a lot of teaching. I do a lot of teaching, a lot of instructing. And I think we're going to start doing online classes wow. on certain things before long. Like certain things with energy you can't teach over, over a screen. I'm old school when it comes to that. But I, I look forward to branching out later on and maybe taking, we'll call it taking the show on the road in other ways in due time. So yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I uh, appreciate you. And thanks so much. And uh, I know somewhere along the way, we'll catch up again. That would be fantastic, Steve. Thank okay. you so much for everything. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action.
Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knock down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay. 